Hello and welcome to this continuing live coding series on creating a website from scratch with Python, Django, and the Wagtail CMS. Uh, this is not a tutorial uh, series, this is actually me uh, creating a website with uh, many features over the last few months and probably for the next couple of months before we hopefully we'll wrap things up. Maybe within a month, we're getting close. So this video is going to consist of problem solving, reading the docs, and probably some bandwidth issues. It looks like my bandwidth is going up and down. So I hope my voice quality is not too bad. The feature we're working on is a bookstore e-commerce aspect and we've got a cart and a checkout process and today I just want to work a little bit on this checkout form to see if we can clean it up a little bit and maybe replace some of the labels just a little bit of low-hanging fruit in the next session we will be looking at online payments using the Braintree um, APIs, payment APIs. So as a first step, I would like to add some bootstrap classes to this form since we're using the bootstrap library. And I might, I will probably will give a bootstrap material design library a try. Specifically, looking at these form components, I think by giving in the bootstrap classes, we will get the styling for free once I include this CSS here. So let's take a look. Okay, and if you're following along in the chat, do feel free to uh, bring up any questions or comments. I don't mind getting off topic a little bit. I try to focus mainly around web development and open source software development. Uh, okay, so let's find the template here. Uh, this is the order creation form. You can see it just passes in some Django fields. And the template for this form is here. So I'm actually just rendering it out as sort of a paragraph. So that might be the first thing I can improve. Kind of shows you what's in your cart as a, an unordered list. And the total and then some fields. So there's a project for Django. I just remembered um, crispy forms. Searching for in the past, reading the docs. I think I might've used this on a different project. We can give this a quick try It'll make our forms nice. It's just a little bit of effort and I believe it supports multiple sort of template packs. And we're going to use Bootstrap 4. Alpha support for Bootstrap 4, still in Alpha. <laughs> uh, well, at the time of this writing, Bootstrap 4 was probably still in Alpha, but um, it's no longer the case. All right, so. The key thing is um, doing this in one line, I think it's pretty convenient. Uh, it gives me a lot of code automatically, including validation, I think messages, uh, error, uh, help text, uh, field labels, you know, the proper field types. Uh, so all of this comes with, um, you know, each of these in a paragraph, which is okay. It labels and inputs with the proper type, just with one line of template code. That's pretty rad. So let's give the crispy form a try. I don't remember, I haven't switched to a pip env yet. I'm going to be doing that, I think, in the uh, another session. So I'm still just using pip. I'm going to stop the project. Chai 
GIT. It's GHI. I think it's caffeine free. So I don't destroy my sleep tonight. Installed. Now we will put crispy forms in the site settings, the base settings. Oh, it's there. So, what did I use that in on? Okay, cool. So, yeah. How easily I can forget. Let's just go through and check out the crispy template pack. Right there, Bootstrap 4. Everything's been pre-configured. I wonder what other form I used this on. It's kind of strange. I don't think this comes by default in the wagtail installation. Okay, so there we go. Let's just pass that into the crispy. I don't know if I should use the uh, saw and lead these. All tags loading needs to be updated. Form tags. All imports have to be done from crispy forms. Uh, there's a migration path. So how do we use it? I think you just put in crispy. Load crispy form tags. And my form set crispy. I don't know if that means I can just take off the P. Let's see if we get an error here. And need to run the site again. Oh, yeah, did it right off the bat. Okay, not too bad, not too shabby. I mean, well, it's pretty blocky. But it did work. Let's go with it. Let's uh, now try this bootstrap material design. Let's see if it just has a quick effect. Oh, yeah, there's a copy. So we'll put this in our base template. Which is also here. Templates, base HTML. We have jQuery here, 311, let's see. Or 331, that's good. Popper JS is also fine. 14 is a little bit more up to date. Bootstrap material design. These are the two lines we need here.
so this is this is expected but uh, well I don't like the effect right off the bat maybe it's okay maybe it's just kind of stark these links don't work right now because I don't have the content there Curious why this is a beveled button. It's kind of bothering me. But, uh, maybe it's okay if I wrap this in a panel or something. Ah, I keep doing that. Also a difference on some of these fields are red and some of them are blue. I'm not sure what that signifies. Given name required, I suppose it's the required fields. Interesting. All right, cool. Uh, I'm on the fence about it. I'll leave it here. It's just a couple of lines, essentially three lines added to the uh, main template. So a different theme. Uh, not this, but uh, yes, this is actually. Okay, I'm going to leave it. For the moment, So this is a model form. Let's go ahead and try to get these. Um, I mean, it's not that bad. I just got kind of used to it. Something about these being offset from everything else. Maybe that's what's bothering me here. Might be able to fix that though. centered the baseline here is lower but these all share a baseline hmm. I'll work with that all right so if I bring up the code for the form the order form not really doing much except passing in a model form and some fields. 
So let's look up the Django docs. How to change the field labels there. straightforward it's just a dictionary field and label lazy import. without the lazy import I think this will work so is it done inside of meta though yeah I think so fields labels okay so let's see let's try it Which ones do I want to override though? Check out. Mainly just the uh, address locality. We're only dealing with the United States um, posting addresses from what we're going to anticipate. Uh, and I don't have a lot of conditional, any conditional logic in this form. It's just showing these fields, as you can see. Uh, trying to keep it really simple. This can get complicated very fast. And I, for some reason, there's just not really a, that I could find a Django package that will give us this dynamic stuff. Uh, Django stuff seems to be a lot more oriented just towards the back end and static rendering of HTML and not so much including the libraries for dynamically showing and hiding fields but I could be wrong on this specific case just so country field so that's possible for somebody to put in another um, country for shipping address we also have planned on having flat rate shipping which won't work for international uh, postage that's gonna be a bridge we'll have to cross I'm wondering if we should even leave this field in Let's look at the model. Add some more help text.
kind of help along the way. I'm also gonna tweak these buttons on that previous menu, and maybe I'll see if I can get this. Um, this is just gonna bother me a little bit. Let's see if I can clean up that nav menu. I think overall this is an improvement. And then the United States Postal Code is usually referred to as the zip code. Hey, what's up, Sebastian? How are you doing? I'm broadcasting a little bit earlier today. <laughs> uh oh, what do you you got a little bit of a fever or let's see what's this one look at? somewhat self-explanatory but I'm going to just be putting them in there and we can change them later yeah Sebastian compatible times right I've been tending towards like 11 p.m. midnight sometimes 1 or 2 a.m. hey by the way can you tell me if my voice is breaking up a lot I'm not sure how good my bandwidth is and it's kind of annoying. If my voice is breaking up a lot, I might have to get a different internet. Okay, it's crystal clear, good. I have this little red light flashing in um, OBS, saying my bandwidth is going up and down and up and down. What have you been up to, Sebastian?
default here equals the United States of America. And Sebastian says, I don't know if it's good to have a max length on cities. Yeah, well, I, for the field, I have to have a max length. I can relax it a little bit. I can do it. <laughs> All right. Sebastian recommends the loosening up of the max length for just the city, or what do you think of the? Uh, here it is, right here, two five five. Anything else? All of them. Country. I think I don't know why I just arbitrarily. Well, I think I did actually search for postal code. I mean, Sixteen was a good one, uh, but I didn't uh, put much thought into it. I think this is probably just a copy and paste thing. Whoa! I'm gonna Google that. I can't pronounce that, but it's a Welsh name. Mm, interesting. Well, I think I mentioned this earlier. I don't know if you weren't here, but we are, for the purpose of this website, only planning to offer shipping to the United States. <laughs> because it's flat rate shipping. We're trying to keep things really simple and not build a whole kind of e-commerce platform or use something uh, like Oscar. I just... Uh, want a basic workflow but we, and we can handle the edge cases yep all right well, good point i'll uh, loosen these up to 255 i don't think that hurts anything in the database to have more characters have a bigger character limit cool Done and done. That's one thing I like about Django. It's got built-in migrations. Something I sorely miss from Meteor development. And it's got support for Postgres. Really strong support for Postgres. Hurrah. With a recent uh, MongoDB sort of situation, I guess. Oh, yeah. CodeBuddies is looking to build a proof of concept in Django. Dude. Who's coordinating that? I am on board with that. I will help. It's probably going to be Django and React, isn't it? Oh, okay. But uh, yes, I will help with the Django aspect. If there's a discussion brewing, or how, how did you catch wind of that, Sebastian? Code Buddies, Django concept. Okay, because I thought the original Code Buddies was built in Django, and then maybe they migrated off of it. Oops. How did I? Right thing. What's the weather in literally a little bit of black apple ball? There was a discussion on the Code Buddy Slack. Okay, I haven't been hanging out there. And this is recent. Seven days ago. Wow. Class based views. Django prototype. Very nice. Postgres 11. Super cool. Mm, there it 
this. Gosh, I'm having a hard time reading. Base and local. Django 2. Great. Yeah, this is fresh. I like it a lot. I think it's a good move, really. I do. Just the JavaScript ecosystem can't seem to get something off the ground that's kind of mature and batteries included along the levels of Laravel, Ruby on Rails, Django, uh, Spring, Java, Spring, something. And honestly, this uh, other open source project I'm working on, the Jerry Life project, uh, built with Meteor. Uh, we're very seriously considering, like, on the brink of having decided to to rewrite it, essentially migrate it over to to Django for these same reasons. Uh, particularly that, well, we have relational data, and we want that to be in Postgres and Mongo. Um, I don't know what, who's kind of worse with this licensing stuff that's going on, Mongo or Elasticsearch. I think Redis was also having some strange invent their own licensing stuff. Have you been following any of those discussions with Mongo, Elastic, or Redis? Puppy doggy. That's a good, that's a good little bouncy puppy. All right. Not really. Yeah, I just think Postgres for the win. It's such a mature database, and yeah, it's got geospatial support and. Uh, Scientist is doing great things with like making it scalable, which is one of the pe the draws that pe took people to the whole NoSQL movement. Yeah, what are you uh, what are you writing with Postgres? If can you divulge any of your trade secrets? Are you doing any personal projects recently, Sebastian? And yeah, what's the status with a Crowducate? Have you been following up with that? It's a Django port or or an edX port, something on the horizon. Yeah, Swamp of Work. I, yeah, I can kind of relate to you there. Uh, okay, so what are we doing here? What are we doing? I guess I'm going to commit some stuff. I'm not quite ready to commit this unless I can clean it up. But let's take a look really quickly. They already had labels, but I'm changing the labels manually. to get those in one I don't want two migrations for that I think they were all the same kind of change I just forgot to hit save can we do it oh and I already ran the migration ah <laughs> uh, okay Oh, so, sorry. Crowducate's kind of lost, or what? Um, I lost the thread. In my mis making mistakes over here, stuff. Okay, well, the migration is good, but now if I migrate. Seems to be okay. Okay, I'll leave it. That's really re remarkable. I had like a halfway migrated. Thing and I deleted the migrations and then combined the migrations to all one file and ran the combined migration that included some of the stuff that had already been done and Django just did it. What? Okay, so Amir started a new company and have been in touch for a while. Yeah, so Karajuke kind of is blipping off the radar. 
Gosh, man. This is at least two, uh, off the top of my head, projects re relating to crowdsourcing educational, open educational resources. I was really big into this for several years. Uh, you know, I was like a wiki educator and uh, peer to peer university was one, Crowducate. Um, they're all just kind of petering out. The open educational resources, OER movement, I'm not sure how well it's doing since like things like Coursera and edX came up and started offering things free and building it as a massively open online course. Uh, but really the openness just meant a bunch of people can sign up, register for it. They lost the golden thread of having the actual resources, the educational resources being open. edX, I think, is doing a little bit better job in that regards. And the edX platform is open source. That's why I was thinking it was a good match for Crowducate, but it's not as crowdsource oriented is the problem. And there's Moodle. Moodle's really great too. It's PHP, so there's that. And then it's not really crowdsourcing. Anyway, I haven't really been able to focus much on this open education stuff as I'd like to. But other projects going on. So what's cooking though, Sebastian, if you had like 20% time at your work, what would you like to build? You got any ideas floating around? Interesting stuff you think should exist in the world? All right, let's commit the migrations. A blog, a personal blog or a blogging platform? So I'm sticking with crispy. That was a good move. I'm just not sure I'm sold on this material thing until I can fix up that um, the templates a little bit. I just dropped in some CSS, so of course things are going to be uh, looking a little bit different right off the bat. Do you have any, by the way, uh, recommendations for I'm using Bootstrap, but for a material design uh, library that's not going to be sort of straddling the fence of Pro version feature here and upgrade and dashboard purchase component stuff you know just open straight open source have you worked with material design much a personal one hey Sebastian you know of dev too right yeah of course you do I think you do I mean I think I've, we've talked about this I don't remember now but uh, yeah, this is a heck of good, yeah, okay, good. Heck of good uh, blogging, so to speak, community. I guess it's a blogging community more or less. It's like people publishing articles like on Medium, uh, but it's like more non-commercial. You know, I'm just gonna uh, mention it even though you probably know all this stuff. And the sort of the tone on the discussions and stuff is not hostile, not you know, flame wars that you're used to on Twitter and stuff like that. I think it's a in this open source platform Ruby on Rails for so for anybody who uh, is thinking about writing, I've written a couple little articles in there, some really great stuff, and you've probably seen it in Hacker News and stuff. Anyway, yeah. What do you so? What kind of topics are you going to have a development blog, Sebastian, or a lifestyle blog, family, family advice? That's an important topic. What am I doing? Oh yes, add crispy forms. Lobsters. Yeah. Vanity. Ah, so then um, it's kind of like Hacker News for Seafood lovers? Hmm, interesting. Mostly serverless, React, and the Jamstack. Now, Jamstack, Jamstack. What was that little fun uh, project? Offline first. Uh, 
hoodie, 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 hoodie. I don't know if this is Jamstack, but I've been wanting to check hoodie out for a while. I don't know how long it's doing, how well it's doing that is, how far it's come along, but I think what was really inter interesting to me about hoodie is their their approach to community building and community management. Hoodie was discontinued. Yeah, that makes sense. I couldn't quite see the spark of the project going. Uh, had some really interesting ideas. Particularly about dream code. I think this is like really inspired by um, Worry Dream. What's his name? Worry Dream. Brett Victor. And kind of like just making coding accessible to people. Of a broad audience, help and promote computational thinking and interactivity exploration, dynamic exploration of complex concepts. Yeah, I'm not sure if Hoodie was discontinued either. I guess I could check it out. I'm trying not to show too much copyright stuff on the stream. But I think okay. this is cool because Hoodie's copy left. And I just, the Brett Victor, I don't know what his yesterday. So, I mean, people are committing. Releases, releases, July, April, Feb, you know, every couple months. I think it's a decent cadence, but I'm not sure on what these are including. Point four, twenty point two point four, twenty. So many bug fix releases. Point eight. Yeah, it's hard to, there's so much going on. It's, I mean, hard to keep track. So disregard Sebastian's comment about hoodie being discontinued. At least it's in maintenance mode. That's a good sign. Cool beans. Okay, so let's see. Brett Victor, though, if you have a chance, check out some of his, his uh, sort of presentations or lectures or works. Just really profound thinker. Uh, lobsters, I'll have to come back to that one. If you, is it open content or open source or anything? Or is it using the Hacker News source code? Lobsters. Pegging. Invitation tree. Yeah, if, uh, if somebody wants to send me an invite for lobsters, I might have even signed up at one point but I would be interesting interested in checking it out okay cool let's get back on Truzak uh, this was done I'm gonna update this guy's suggestion and the question and those are a little bit more complicated what do we got Sebastian does not have a lobsters account oh man I thought you were Plugged into all the all the communities, Sebastian. Override, override, let's see. Now here's where I have to step back and maybe seek some advice. What's a good way of handling? Firstly, and let's be honest, how bad does this look? On a scale of one being meh to 10 being uh, basically find a new career no i'm just kidding but uh on a, on a badness scale it's pretty what does it say to you when you see this and if i for some reasons if i maximize it it's not going to show the whole stream. there's no padding on the top of the create order so yeah that we can probably fix and i think that should be done automatically by a, um, this container here so let's look at the base html Whoops, that's a good one. Should be done site-wide this way. We can see what, it's not running. There's that, fixed, thanks Sebastian. Maybe that's the main thing, but this is bothering me. One mid-term goal, short-term goal I guess is to my header is acting funny. Let's see. Uh, Sebastian has got a bunch of comments here. So 
especially just a consumer of lobsters working towards the shift into a content creator. That's a big transition. There's no padding on top, got that one. You can group some of the f address fields. Yeah, okay, that's a good point, but here's how my form is defined. I don't really know how to dig into that right now. I think I would have to like define a form helper and do something. Do something advanced. Layout stuff. Yeah, so I didn't, I mean this, I'd almost prefer writing HTML over that. But, yeah, maybe I could get used to it. This seems like kind of a lot to grok in order to do something which would be a couple of lines, uh, a couple of classes or whatever. Couple HTML elements, I believe. Bootstrap stuff. Mm. So yeah, I'll think about that. I agree though. These should be side by side. And this address should all be in one grouping. I'll add an issue for that. So group the address fields, show these in line, and do something with the email. Probably put it up in there. Good suggestion, Sebastian. Okay, so yeah, that's, look at the header then. Let's see. Now here it looks okay. That's pretty nice actually. I, I can dig. Man, I like that. Tablets. I'd almost, uh, I think the solution might just be to set the breakpoint up. How do I do that? So that it does this on medium screens or something. What's your experience like with hamburger menus? Do you think people are catching on uh, in a general sense? Like maybe like elderly people or people who haven't used a lot of computers. Is that not, I mean, that's pretty common and it's the default with bootstraps. So I'm assuming there's some design sense to it. I mean, you know, that's pretty, uh, it's pretty intuitive to me to work with those. All right, so let's see.
what would be some keywords to search this? Bootstrap, hamburger menu, breakpoint. this stuff if this just works that'll rock um, so how's the family doing Sebastian how's everybody did you get to go on a holiday or uh, do anything fun over the summer. I can't remember. When did we last hang out? I'm trying to remember that. I have poor memory. Sorry. Templates. Nav bar. Menu. Oh, it Wow, it's already there. Very cool. If this just works. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Yes, it's pretty good. Pretty good. Now the font face changed with this as well. So it's still a little bit iffy. I think I can improve this by making a form. Let's go. Okay, so that was the answer. Form group. Really excited about that. locate this I got too many tabs man I will forget that but okay this is the search template so search templates search HTML form search so basically Just to take a look at it in context. All right. Yeah, it's pretty good. Search. All right, so the main difference between a form. to have an input group to group them together I believe that's the thing then we'll have an input type so 
such and such, form control, placeholder, aria label, and yeah, I should be added. Search query, is that redundant search query? Maybe not. Describe the bar. This would be ID. needs to be wrapped in a div. All right, got it. Whoops. I think that's it. And then I can choose See how this looks. All right, Sebastian, you still with me, or did you go off to to do your own thing? Yes, looks a lot better. It's actually, even a little bit cleaner than that uh, search one there, but I'll leave it alone. should do that with these also because that that looks pretty clean i like it uh, i think this is worth it worth being consistent all right and then i feel comfortable using this material design library it's pretty nice just had some rough edges and the off white is just takes a little bit of getting used to but i think it's a good idea it recedes to the background. It's kind of like paper colored. And then these pop more. You get, that way you get the emphasis on the content. Nice. Good stuff. So, what am I looking for? Products store. I just lost it. to cart okay let's take a look again input group so you're doing an input group and a form group especially says sorry bro that was afk for a bit and got around hey man it's no problem I'm glad to see you again and hope you and the family are doing well and try to catch you around uh soon
the f form group goes here, and these go in an input group. Inside the form, form group. Is the form group even necessary? I'm wondering. Just try to keep my marker clean. Okay, so the form group is definitely necessary. So I see that now, I see that. So the label goes there, and then we'll have these input groups. Got it. then indentation quantity label little bit of tea okay, now are we? and I like the append that the action follows the input margin left. Leave those alone, but that looks correct here. Placeholder. Actually, yeah, we might be able to get rid of the... Uh, mm, I'll leave the label because it's numeric and it's going to have a value, so the placeholder isn't applicable here. Now we need this input group append. Let me just copy this so I don't have to make too many typos. that looks nice great now we're consistent across the uh, board with the search uh, okay we'll do it here too I think this should be displayed on a white background though. Improve the contrast and readability. This probably is not too bad of a contrast. Okay, so now we're looking at a specific product, like a book. All right, getting lots of practice here. So we have the form group with label quantity and inside that. So we take out this hidden input. So it can really go anywhere in the field after the CSR token is found. Really, I believe this markup should be exactly the same. I'd like to be able to reuse this form pretty much. I think there's some caveat on why I had to create this redundant code. Oh, that is not closed. So.
fracture div, dividus. No, just indentation. T2. Alright, so now we're going to do the cart. Detail. I'm going to fix this button. What is the deal? Hmm, I don't have Faunus unloaded here. I thought I did. Little tweaks and put that margin top there on the trash. Wait a minute. Why did that? Probably a cleaner way of doing this to just center the content vertically. I don't know if there's this many margin tops. So. Good grief. No, that did not work. I think there's a bootstrap helper.
think they'll apply to the yeah, looking good, looking good. Ah, yeah. Well, that might as well be consistent across the board. There. Mary's gonna notice that. <laughs> it's so close, though. It's so close. I think it looks pretty clean now. Stuff. All right, what am I doing else? There's something else. I don't know, this is totally a guess, and I can just no. call it out a little bit. I suppose I can put it back to card button here. And the order page. This is going to be a sloppy commit. Is there any small stuff I can commit right now? It's looking pretty good. Some of these commits. Well, 
there a little bit of pressure in my mind. Input group for quantity. So yeah, I think at this point I'm gonna stick with the material design library. It's working good. I'll get some feedback from Mary. I can remove this stuff. Is that a real word? It is now. All right. I like this forward and back button concept here. And I believe we should be consistent down here on this create order forward and back. Create order back to cart. So let's do that real quick. These are the focus of this session is on these like little details, aesthetic stuff that uh, is not too involved, uh, but gives it a nice um, look and feel. Next session, we'll be doing the payment processor. I just don't want to get into too much heavy lifting right now. Uncharted territory. I'm kind of trying to keep it chill tonight. So the detail. The order. This one's a little tricky. Okey-dokey.
we just need to make it a button and it should recognize that it's a submit button. Hold it. I think this is an improvement. So yeah. Looking good. I'll just commit these and uh, it's been a little bit, it's been an hour and a half, so that's a good actually amount of time for improvements. So I'm gonna merge this pull request. We'll start a new branch and pull request in the next session. Again, adding the payment processor from Braintree. stuff I'll take care of the rest of the commits and pushing off stream okay well thanks this has been another session of creating a website from scratch with Python Django and the wagtail CMS uh, these are all really uh, enjoyable projects to work with from my perspective uh, pretty mature great developer experience um, you know, now we're working in Bootstrap and uh, the material Bootstrap material design uh, have been really nice. Uh, easy wins to get uh, some good luck and good looking, good looking outcomes and having good luck, I suppose too. Appreciate everybody who stops has stopped by in the Twitch stream. It's always nice to have somebody to chat with during uh, during these coding sessions and get off topic a little bit. It's great. If you're checking this out on YouTube, feel free to you know make any suggestions or ask any questions in the comment section below and I'll try to respond to those as quickly as possible. This project is open source on GitHub. If you've probably noticed that through the stream, uh, the lower right hand corner has the GitHub address. So feel free to check out our code, make any um, modifications, open pull request, uh, bug report, use the code in your own project. That's the reason we're doing this in an open manner. Great. Well, thanks again for watching and have a really nice day.